Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you are having a splendid week so far. I am Widya, Head of International Residential in Singapore. Uh, this evening, we have all of our viewers tuning in, not just from Singapore, but also our neighbors in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand. It has been a great pleasure conducting these webinars in the last two months to keep you informed and hopefully entertained. This evening, my guests today are colleagues whom many of you have been acquainted with, Mr. Kentaro Sato, Head of International Residential, as well as Ms. Meg Tang, Manager from Japan International Residential Team. Sato-san joined JLL in 2012 to spearhead the Japanese uh, residential business right about the time when we first started bringing in these opportunities to you. And Meg joined us in 2017 as a manager, um, and she has joined us today to be participating during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Don't forget, we will open the floors for Q&A at the end of the session. So please um, type in your questions away um, at the, and you can just simply click on the question mark button and that's where you can submit uh, them. Here is a quick look at the agenda with the topics that we will be covering today. Uh, first of all, we will be talking about key markets indicators. And then we will discuss and summarize the latest JLL report on the Japan property market. Um, and, and we are also very interested to share with you the findings of the latest survey we conducted with developers and letting agents um, and, and uh, sharing with you their insights um, on the current situation as well as the uh, forecast. Last but not least, uh, we are so fortunate to have Sato to share his personal experience as an investor in the Tokyo market. So before we begin, I always like to hear from the viewers. So please participate in the quick poll that um, has now opened. Give me one second. You will see that um, the poll questions have come out on the screen. So let me go through the questions with you so we can participate together. The first question, have you invested in Japan before? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Second question, do you think the postponement of the Tokyo Olympics will affect the property market? Option A, yes. Option B, no. The third and last question, do you have plans to invest Tokyo. Option A, yes, and option B, no. Very easy responses. Um, you know, we, we always like to have this session to be interactive. And um, I'll give you a couple of seconds more uh, to respond before we begin. Thank you so much so far for all the questions. There is still about a minute and a half left for you to respond before we close the poll. All right. Um, you know, at the start of the year, Sato, you made um, an executive decision to move back to Japan to bring the Japanese residential business to greater heights. Sato-san, perhaps you want to give a little introduction to our new viewers about yourself um, and, and the JLL residential business and why Japan residential market continues to be a top pick for many Asian investors. to unmute yourself sir okay good evening in japanese konbanwa uh, and some of you may be familiar with me and others uh, not so uh, let me introduce myself my name is kentaro sato and probably you recognize me as sato and that's fine call me sato and i've been in property market in 18 years 
And last six years, I was actually based in Singapore and promoting the Japanese condominiums to our clients in Asia, which includes Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Hong Kong, and mainland China. And during this period, we have been selling about 700 units in Tokyo, Osaka, and Fukuoka. And the property price went up by 32% in Tokyo, 23 wars. And the rental was up by 9% in the last five years. And the population is very, very importantly, went up by 44% in the last 20 years in the Tokyo Central five wars. And I would like to highlight the other three points, the currency. The Japanese yen is one of the key currency in the world along with US dollar and the British pounds. That means the Japanese yen is a safe haven. And also Japan is a very rare country where there is no restriction over foreign ownership and no additional tax to foreigners. And the ownership itself, most of the project that we introduced to you is the freehold. So the ownership is well protected and registered in Japanese system. And I believe that the, these are the key factors that our client have been investing in Japan. And I would also like to highlight the recovery of the Japan economy after COVID-19. This chart shows the recovery level of each market, each stock market. January is when the market opened this year. In March, every market hit the bottom in March. Some hit the bottom in 17th of March, some in on 20th, I think. But all the market hit the bottom in March. And then the price now. If you look at the red one, that's the Japanese uh, the stock market, the Nikkei 225. And Japan is showing the strongest comeback from January. Yeah. yeah, so, um, you know, recently JLL's research and strategic consultancy teams released two official reports as a response to the COVID-19 situation. Would you like to highlight the key messages for us today? Uh, yes, we do. The JLL has published two reports, COVID-19 global real estate implications and real estate policy support 2020. In those reports, JLL categorized residential sector with four subcategories, such as multifamily, student housing, care homes and healthcare facilities, and co-living platform. Most of our product falls into multifamily category. And in general report, it says, the multifamily is widely considered to be the most resilient sector to the real estate impact from COVID-19. But this will be challenged should growing unemployment begins to soften rental demand. The widespread use of income protection schemes will mitigate against the worst of these impact, provided they remain relatively short in duration. Mm -hmm. So what does it really mean for the multifamily sector then? So what this means is that the multifamily is relatively safe under current situation. And, and the government income protection scheme is a key to prevent the, prevent the rental demands to be softened by unemployment. So let's look at the, what the government schemes we have in Japan. These are the four main schemes, employment support, cash benefit support, funding support, and tax and social insurance payment grace. Payment support. Uh, employment support. Uh, simply speaking, the government subsidizes the salary about 67% for the employees of large corporation and 80% the employees of small to mid-sized companies. And this is available from 1st of April to end of June. 
Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but why is it only until the end of June this year? Uh, yeah, that is a good question. And, but we don't think that is a problem. As a state of emergency in Japan ended in this last Monday, which it was like three days ago. And, and uh, state of emergency is similar to lockdown or the circuit breaker. And so the businesses are slowly getting back to normal and the bars and restaurants are opening now. Wow, that sounds really positive. You know, we, uh, for us in Singapore, we are really counting down to that day when we can go back to some normalcy. Um, so what about the other scheme, Sato? Yep, the second scheme is a cash benefit. And it provides uh, 2 million Japanese yen and 1 million Japanese yen respectively to the affected small to mid-sized enterprises and individual businesses, including freelancers. And it also provides 100,000, which is about 1,000 US dollar to every citizen to support weakening consumption. And every citizen means for includes foreigners who has a residency in Japan as well. And if you're res uh, Japanese or foreigner, you have a, if you have a family, let's say you have a spouse and two children, as a household, you receive about four thousand US dollar. So that is uh, that is quite a lot. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, funding support and all that. Yep, and the fund funding support provides a financial program to uh, with uh, no interest and no collateral loans to small to mid sized enterprises. And there are other funding programs to large cooperation as well. And the lastly, the tax and social insurance payment grace. It is a moratorium on the payment of tax and social insurance for affected businesses. And that is available with no interest rate and no collateral. And it is up for up to one year. And this is very, very important uh, from the, the view of the, the small to mid-sized uh, company owner. It helps cash flow for them. And because in Japan, the company must pay the 50% of the social insurance for its employees. So this helps a lot. Mm. I mean, Japan is always known to be resilient during crisis. And it's really reassuring to note that the government um, is proactively supporting and protecting the people and uh, its economy. How much money is the Japanese government actually spending? Uh, in, for this so-called um, stimulus package? Uh, yes, the budget for this employment protection and the business continuity is 98 trillion yen. And the total budget for the emergency economic measures for COVID-19 infection is uh, 170 trillion. So Japanese government is allocating 76% of them to protect the employment and the business continuity. And this amount also represents 17% of Japan's GDP, which is the one of the highest level of the spending compared to the other countries in the world. Mm -hmm. Definitely looking very promising. And, um, you know, um, we are so happy to hear that uh, the Japanese um, government ended the state of emergency early um, in the week. Um, you know, you shared with us that we conducted the survey uh, that was sent out to the uh, property experts in Japan. Uh, perhaps you want to share with us the findings? Uh, yes, uh, the, in April, we conducted the survey to developers, letting agents, and letting agents also do the resale as well. And on their views of impact of COVID-19 and the postponement of the Tokyo Olympics and the forecast. So we did a survey on three sectors, primary market, lettings, and the secondary market. And in primary market, we had a three key findings. The price may not affect, uh, may not be affected much. And the delay of Tokyo Olympics unlikely affect the price negatively. The areas near redevelopment areas 
are the pocket of growth. Let's look at the chart. This chart shows how it affected the pricing while uh, pricing. In the while, uh, the 88% says no plan to decrease the price of the existing projects. But half of the answer on the right hand side said the price start decreasing. And 24% says increasing price will be increasing in a specific area. So let's look at this 24% and then let's look at the, the which area that will be. So many of them think three locations are the pocket of growth in Tokyo with, with or without the COVID-19. That is a redevelopment area and areas near to the station and three A's, which includes Akasaka, Aoyama, and Azadu. Mm. Um, well, I'm, I'm very pleased that, uh, you know, their responses are aligned with our strategy for many years. Uh, I mean, these are, these are all the categories and segments of the market that we have been uh, promoting uh, that, that gives value to our investors. So what, what about the impact of the postponement of the Tokyo Olympics? And I'm sure a lot of our investors who had uh, bought in uh, Japan would like to know that. Uh, yes, the, this is a result about the, the Olympics. And we asked the, is the delay of Olympics affecting the price and the price after the Olympics. And the majority said uh, no. And it is probably because uh, the, most of the infrastructure upgrade was done for Tokyo Olympics already. And of course, hotel, restaurants, uh, airlines, taxis will be affected by the postponement of the Olympics because they couldn't make the revenue as they planned and as well as the Airbnb investors. However, the regular condominium investors uh, is, like, is less likely to be affected. Mm -hmm. And we also asked what are the key factors affecting condo price positively? And as this shows, only 6% represents for Tokyo Olympics 2020. So all the upside for Tokyo Olympics were already realized. And 40% thinks redevelopment projects and uh, is the key for the growth. And also, uh, and the second choice was the uh, interest rate, which is uh, still a very, very low level. And we also asked the key factors affecting condo price uh, negatively. And of course, the distance from the station are very important. Uh, but the top answer was a drop of stock price. So that as the stock price goes down, wealthy family doesn't have the money to invest in property. So it's uh, also very important. But however, as I explained earlier, the Japanese stock market is showing the strongest comeback among all major stock market. Okay, so what about our Latin partners? What do they have to say about, uh, about all this? Yes, in Latin, we have uh, two key findings. The rental are stable and may not be affected negatively as government ended the state of emergency. And the delay of the Tokyo Olympics unlikely affect the rental and occupancy rate negatively. Let's look at the, the result. We asked the, how the rental of Tokyo condo being affected uh, if the state of emergency uh, continues. So 44% no change and 45% said it may be uh, decreasing. Uh, having said that, the state of emergency has ended earlier this week and already in the recovery phase now. And I would like to highlight again this 9% who said rental to increase in specific areas. Where are those areas? That is again redevelopment area. That is the top choice, followed by Bancho, which is a prime residential area next to the Imperial Palace and five minute walk, uh, 
And uh, also the five minute walk from the station, which means near to the station is also very important. Good to know. Um, so do they have any opinion at all with regards to the postponement, postponement of the Tokyo Olympics? Yeah. The result the, for both rental and occupancy, right? The majority thinks the postponement of the Olympics doesn't affect them. And there are two reasons for it. And one is uh, employment in Japan is in general, it is very, very protected. Very difficult to fire uh, empl employees uh, by the law. So that's why it's very difficult to, to fire and for the people to lose their job. And the second reason is, of course, the government scheme is supporting the company to maintain the employment. So that's why the, and not to mention the state of emergency has already ended. So that's why it was all, only about six weeks of lockdown in Japan. Mm, I see. Um, you know, I have a lot of investors who have been asking and are very curious about the secondary market in Japan. Uh, what about resale? How about it? Yep. The resale, only one key findings, areas near the redevelopment project are the pockets of growth. So this is the result. 59% uh, said after Olympics, the condominium price in the secondary market will decrease. And 9% said increase for specific areas. Let's look at the 9% who said uh, increase for the specific areas. And again, the redevelopment areas and seconded by the 3A areas. And this is align, this aligns with the, what we have been marketing, the redevelopment project and the three A's. Um, yeah, that's good to know. Uh, before that, you did uh, mention that 59% had uh, voted, you know, slightly decrease or decrease. What is your view on this 59%? Uh, yes, uh, that, that is a good question. And there are three points. The one is which area they are referring to. The, other, the others are the, uh, the building age. And the last is uh, negativity of Japanese nature, which I'm not going to elaborate it now, but I will explain the first two points. And the resale agent, uh, resale agent who answered uh, the, the survey, they cover, they, they don't cover only in central Tokyo. They cover Tokyo, so the, the somewhere without the Tokyo 23 wars, and also the surrounding prefectures, which is Chiba, Saitama, Kanagawa. And because of the urbanization is happening, the, those areas are becoming less popular and cannot expect the capital appreciation, to be honest. And not all areas in those prefectures, but in general. And uh, they handle relatively new units, but they also handle very old ones, like 30 years old. So I can understand. I can understand uh, that uh, there are some of them uh, believe that the price will uh, to go down. But however, the, what we marketed is mostly in central Tokyo and relatively new and near the redevelopment project. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think that is totally reasonable. Sato-san, you walk the talk and you have experienced yourself being a homeowner as well as a landlord. What would you say your experience as an investor um, in Tokyo has been? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. I would like to share my personal investment. And this is very, very personal. But uh, I would like to share that because I am an investor myself as well. And I don't want to push some product that I have never invested. I'm on, uh, I'm on the same page, I'm taking the same risk as my, our client. Okay, uh, well, that is good to know. And I think it's always very good to hear from a fellow investor to give us a reassurance of what's really happening in the market um, in Japan. Um, I guess, you know, you mentioned, we, we have been talking about uh, specific units that 
a lot of the developers or even the uh, Latinx partners have um, identified as uh, uh, potential areas for growth. Um, you know, you being in Japan and you have been meeting with a lot of developers and looking at developments um, on the ground. Any any of the projects um, you like to share as your top picks uh, or recommendations? Yes. Uh, based on the result of the survey, I chose I picked four projects that I would recommend because of the, the it, it was obvious that the projects near the redevelopment area is a pocket of growth. So I chose four four projects. Three of them are related to the massive redevelopment projects in Tokyo. The first one is, uh, is located in Roppongi and the Zabu area. And it is right next to the redevelopment project, which is the 9.2 million square feet of floor size and 0 0.9 million square feet of the uh, site area. So it is one minute walk to the, this massive redevelopment project, which has a park and grocery stores, restaurants, and all of these are available uh, from the, someone who lives outside of the, the redevelopment project. So you can access to it uh, one, uh, within one minute. But the pricing of the condominiums within that the redevelopment project, which are not announced yet, but market, according to the market rumor, compared to this project pricing, it is possibly to be 20 to possibly 50% higher than the price of this condominium. And also uh, the second one is uh, it's located in Tsukiji and also walking distance from Ginza. And Tsukiji has a massive, massive land of 2.4 million square feet land sitting right in Tsukiji. That is the, where the Tsukiji fish market was. And we don't know what's going to be, but it will be redeveloped for sure. And this project is located walking distance to the redevelopment site and also walking distance to Ginza. So that's why uh, I think uh, this project is a promising as well. And the third one is located in Takanawa and also near to Shinagawa station. And the Takanawa just opened the one, uh, the new stations along the Yamanote line station, which is called the uh, Takanawa Gateway Station. Because it was opened in March, a lot of people couldn't go because of the COVID-19. But uh, Takanawa Gateway, Gateway is not just a station, it is also the redevelopment project with a 9.1 million square feet floor size and also 0 0.8 million square feet as a land size. It is one of the largest redevelopment area in Japan and in Tokyo. And the fourth one is a Toyosu. The reason I recommend this project is because, because of a high yield, but there is another reason. Because of the COVID-19, people's work style may change a little bit, and some of people may want to work from home. Most of the people, including I think ourselves, and just the regular people, we don't have extra space in our house. We're not expecting, we're not expected uh, to shift to this yet. So it is very important to have some uh, common facility as a co-living, uh, co co-working space or the individual working booth so people can down there and do their work. And luckily, this project in Toyosu has a massive co-working space as well as an individual booth. So that's why uh, this will be highly appreciated uh, soon in the near future. So that's why I recommend uh, this one. And not to mention that with the market rental, 
you can achieve about 5%. Some of the unit, you can achieve 5% uh, when go yield. So those are the, the, these are the four top choices for me. Mm, thank you. Um, I actually um, had the opportunity to look at the uh, Toyosu development right before the uh, lockdown. That was my last international travel. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's something like uh, Marina Bay. I would say everything is brand new. Um, and it's also close to my favorite um, team lab uh, museum, which is very fun and interactive. Right. I mean, that's just um, a little sidetrack. Um, so let's let's maybe um, go through the Q&A session then, shall we? Um, so like I've mentioned before, Meg has joined us to also uh, be part of the panel to answer the questions. Meg, perhaps you want to say hello uh, to the viewers and introduce yourself. Okay, thank you, Rydia. Uh, good, e uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Meg from Jail, Japan. I have joined the team about three years ago. Uh, before that, I was in letting management company. So some of you may know me from back then already. And I'm based in Tokyo, but I do fly a lot to the Southeast Asia and I really miss visiting Singapore and Malaysia. So I hope to see you in person soon again. Okay, that's good. So before I forget, um, you know, there's still time to key in your, submit your questions. Uh, don't forget to key in on the Q&A session. So let's begin with the first question, perhaps. Um, um, no, Sato, you can answer this. Uh, you know, we know that Japan has a declining population. Is there really enough demand for housing in places like Tokyo? Uh, the answer is yes. And yes to what we are marketing and no to the rest of the area. And it is true that the population in Japan has been decreasing. And, but if you look at the numbers, some of the areas, the population is increasing massively. And especially in the city center like Tokyo, Osaka, and Fukuoka. And in Tokyo, in the last 20 years, the population has been increased about 44% in the central Tokyo. And that is about 1.9% annual growth in average. But if you take a look at the recent five years, Average annual growth rate to increase to 2%, so 1.9 to 2%, so not much, but so this is the clear evidence that the recently the people are shifting towards cities and the city centers more and more. And those are the areas that we need more supply of the condominium, and that is the, the project that we are marketing. Okay, that's good to know. Um, okay, that's a question here. Uh, we are based in Singapore and we are looking to invest. Who will help us with the rental management in Japan? Okay. Matt, Matt, perhaps you want to answer that? Yeah, sure. Um, so we have been working with uh, several letting and management companies. And uh, one of the example is uh, Kemi's who is uh, very experienced and very strong in the high-end residential market in central Tokyo. Um, we have been working with them since we first uh, started our Japan properties sale. So they understand very well what the investors are looking for. And the other partners that we are looking at, that we are working with are the subsidiary companies of the developers, who are also very reputable and have experience in managing wide range of properties. And a couple of months before the handover, we will reach out to the clients and ask again what you want to do with the units. And then we will uh, link you up with the letting and management company. And they, uh, both, uh, all of them offers guarantee and non-guarantee rental scheme. Okay, there's a couple of questions on the rental. Um, there's one from an existing landlord uh, who would like to uh, for you to kind of like explain the difference between the standard lease and the fixed lease in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that the rental practice in Japan is sometimes uh, not confusing as it is quite different from your countries or what you know. 
And uh, standard lease is, as its name says, it is the most common rental type. Uh, it's a two years tenure and renewable. And its Japanese law protects the rights of tenants quite heavily. So as long as they are behaving or paying the rent and not causing trouble, such as vandalizing your property, they have a right to renew. And whereas in fixed lease, for example, if it is a three years fixed lease, then the lease must end after three years and cannot be renewed. And I won't be going to too much in detail about this topic because actually we're going to uh, create a video content to uh, answer these uh, frequently asked questions and post it to our Facebook page. And later on, uh, we will share you our Facebook link. And if you are interested to know more, you can always uh, follow our Facebook page and find out the answers. Mm -hmm. And what is the resale procedure like, especially if you have a tenant in place? Is it easy to sell with tenancy? Mac, perhaps you can continue with that response. Okay. okay. Um, so if you want to sell your property, you can either reach out your existing leasing company or reach out to us. And if you want to, um, your, your living management company can provide you a visual estimate. And once you have agreed with that, then you exchange a mediation contract to start marketing your property in the market. And with regard to your second question, is it easy to sell with tenancy? Um, with the current market, it is better to sell uh, vacant because um, now we see more demand in uh, looking for own use. So it is better as of now, it's better to sell with our tenant. So it's uh, always good if you uh, let us know about or let your letting management company know about your uh, investment scheme. Is it a long term or is it is it a, if you want to sell within a certain period, takes uh, three years, five years, then we will advise you with the most appropriate way. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, interesting questions coming in. I'll try my best to go through all of them. Um, this is to Sato San. Um, there's a few, um, you know, uh, there's, there's a few parts to this question, which I think is quite related to one another. So I'm just going to ask it to you as a um, whole. Um, is Harumi considered a redevelopment area? Has the resale been popular? And how long did you have to hold your Chuo property to enjoy the 22% gain? Uh, the Harumi is considered as a redevelopment project, and, but not 100%. Because uh, the redevelop what's the good about the redevelopment is a redevelopment, redevelopment comes with the infrastructure update which will come with it, but not yet. And Harumi has a plan to have uh, the BRT bus rapid transit, which will be available after uh, Olympics. And so it will be delayed uh, for one or two years. So although this is a redevelopment project, but uh, I haven't enjoyed the infrastructure update yet. And how, how long uh, do I have to wait is, uh, it's been completed in, it, it was completed in 2016, so it's been about four years. And it, it is uh, the popular, uh, I think so. And because, although I said I haven't enjoyed the infrastructure, infrastructure update, but it's true that uh, it will be happening. And compared to four years ago, people can see, oh, it will be happening soon. So that's why uh, the people uh, see this project as a very uh, good buy. And, and I say I had, a, I had a five viewings and uh, one month ago, I was, I was thinking, uh, I, I wasn't thinking that I could sell a unit in, in this year. So 
can only say through my experience, uh, it seems it's, uh, it's quite popular. Mm -hmm. And the feedback from the viewers, because I teach myself, and it seems very, very positive. Okay, that's good. Um, you know, there is a fellow investor in Harumi as well asking when is the best time to unlock the investment or, you know, I guess would, would you recommend them to continue renting for now? Yeah, uh, I think so. At this point, all of my uh, viewers are for own use. There is uh, the more, uh, more incentive for the people who borrow the very reasonable Japanese loan, no interest rate, high LTV, and then live there by themselves. So if you're renting it, I think the rental yield in this unit should be high because I was renting it for three years. So just rent it as long as possible. And once the, your tenant submit the termination show notice, that's when you should think about you should sell it or if you should keep it and keep renting it. Mm -hmm. so under this market right now, uh, I think it's better to, if, if it's rented, it's better to keep it as it is. Okay, thank you. Um, there's also a, um, a viewer asking Sato-san, why is the redevelopment project so popular for both owner, occupiers and tenants? Uh, I get there's also a leading question to that. Will resale units um, uh, that are 20 years old safe to buy and invest in? Okay, the, about the redevelopment, uh, it is there are two two points. One is, as I said, it comes with the infrastructure upgrade, and it redevelopment project will happen in the large land, which are usually uh, very rare to get, and in those lands, usually there is no 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 infrastructures. So that's why, like uh, Takanawa Gateway Station, that is in between two stations, Shinagawa and Tamachi. So if there is no Takanawa Gateway Station, you have to walk all the way to Shinagawa Station, all the way to Tamachi Station. But because of the opening of the new station. All of a sudden, the value of the land has increased and the convenience of that area has increased. And that is one of the reasons, infrastructure update, right? And the other reason is the, uh, the latest technology and the change of the lifestyle. Like, as I mentioned for the Toyosu project, the people may need a space for work, not at the office, but the, at your own unit or the near your uh, where you live. So the lifestyle of people will change over time. And now I think everyone agrees it is changing very, very quickly more than before. So upgrading the where you live the, the, and, and as the lifestyle changes, it's very important. So the people, people will be attracted to the redevelopment project. That's the, the, the main two reasons, I think. A 20 years old condominium. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the location. Depends on the location because it is very, very important, especially if it's older. If it's one minute to the station, two minutes to the station, and if it's 20 year old, I think it still attract people. Because your selling point can be near to the station. And what's bad about the investment as an investor is if your only selling point will be it's cheaper than other units, then you have to decrease your rental and then the value will decrease. So you have to have something, that, uh, some strong selling points that change over time and that and for the property it's a, it's a location you cannot change the location building can be replaced mm -hmm. so if you're 20 year old condominium it seems 
very good investment because it's cheap, but if it's far from station, then my recommendation is not to invest. Mm. Um, I think that question definitely opened up to uh, further questions. So I will take one more, <laughs> one more for that. Um, someone would like to know, uh, would it be okay to get a surveyor, easily to get a surveyor to, to do an assessment on all properties? Uh, for evaluation? Yeah. Evaluation. Uh, it, is, uh, it is difficult. I have to say it is difficult because uh, Japan is not as transparent as Singapore or like UK, rather, I think that's number one, like top transparency in the property market. All the resale, uh, the transaction can be viewed on the website. Uh, it's not. So it is very difficult to find out what the market price of the condominium in Japan from the public information. So you, you have to rely on the, the resale agent and who can be fair about the pricing, not to, uh, not to change the price because they want to make money. Mm. But I, yeah, but we, are part, we have a partnership with uh, someone who we can trust. So we can always uh, the, the help that the, to get evaluation from those uh, the resale agents. So that's good to note. Um, I, I suppose there are a couple of um, viewers who probably are interested to invest in Japan. And while, while we have an appointed or recommended tax consultant um, uh, that we've been working with very closely for all these years, um, there are a few that want um, to know a little bit of the tax rates uh, for foreign investor without going into too much detail. Perhaps, you know, maybe Matt, do you want to... Uh, uh, give Satosan a break and uh, give an overview of a uh, tax summary just on a uh, top level. Okay, sure. Um, basically, as we uh, Satosan has mentioned, uh, foreigners and the locals we all pay the same tax and the same tax rate. And um, I saw some there was some question about uh, the capital gain tax. Um, yes, we do have capital gain tax and. Um, after holding a, um, you have a five year threshold. And if you're after owning, after owning a property for five years, the tax rate will be uh, 15%. If you sell your property within five years, it's 30%. So um, a lot of our clients will try to keep their properties more than five years before selling. And um, Maybe I, I'll, I'll, I'll go through a general taxation that you need to know about when you purchase a property, um, properties in Japan. Uh, when you purchase, you need to pay a uh, stamp duty. The stamp duty is very low, maybe um, only um, 30,000 Japanese yen. And uh, you also need to pay some um, uh, registration tax. And um, also a property tax, uh, which is uh, similar to estate duty, which I have to pay every year. And altogether, when you purchase a new property, uh, you need to pay two to three percent uh, tax of your property price. And that's the, the one time cost. And after the one time cost, every year you need to pay the uh, property tax. And then when you sell your property, you need to pay the, the capital gain tax, which is, uh, as mentioned, 30% uh, before uh, five years and 15% after five years. Okay, thank you very much. Um, like I said, uh, if you want a more detailed um, tax advice, we are more than happy to link you up with our tax um, advisor. Uh, he has been assisting so many of our Asian investors uh, for tax filing, for estate planning, and etc. So we are here to offer you the whole full pack um, service. Um, okay, I think uh, we have time for one final question. Let's see, an interesting one, perhaps. Um, 
Sato-san, do you expect um, a fall in tourism after the Olympics? Um, uh, uh, will there be a fall, especially from the Chinese? That will uh, affect prices in Japan if the economy is affected by tourism. Yes, uh, yes, I think so. Uh, according to the some news articles, Japan is a top destination by the mainland Chinese to travel to after uh, uh, the, this COVID-19. And we will still, we'll still have beautiful four seasons, very beautiful sceneries, a lot of like wellness, and uh, we're still making sushi. So we still have Kobe beef. I'm sure uh, that the people will slowly coming back to uh, Japan. And because uh, the, we have proved that the, our hygiene and uh, the stick to the rules, uh, the disciplines have proved uh, that the, the one of the lowest uh, rate of the number of the death our population. So, yeah, I think so. But, Japanese economy is not really depending on the inbound tourism, actually. It is helping, I appreciate it. But the Japanese, Japan is one of the largest, the, one of the largest company with the, the, the domestic consumptions. About 60% of, of our GDPs, uh, the domestic consumption. So the Japanese economy as strong as before with or without the tourism but of course we want to see you guys we want uh we want many people to come to japan so uh yes it will be recovering and but if not but still it won't affect too much to the uh, economy in japan actually mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know about um, uh, you, but I certainly love Japan and I have to make a trip once again. Yeah, I'm Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Japan I love Japan. Because it's such a great, you know, such a great country, such great culture and obviously the food. Um, and, and, you know, I think uh, over the years, Japan has definitely made its mark um, to really break boundaries for all cultures, not just the Chinese, you know, Americans, Europeans, all now visiting Japan regularly. Um, that's good. I think, okay, one last final question uh, from this um, uh, gentleman, and which I think we didn't really cover uh, before, but could you also share uh, the general, um, you know, rental yields in central Tokyo? Uh, yes, uh, in general, if you buy the high-end areas like uh, the Aoyama, Azabu, like in UK, I think it's a, like, uh, the Belgravia, uh, the those high end areas. Rental yield without the guaranteed rental, with the market rental, gross around 3%, more or less 3%. And if it's uh, the mass market product, 4%. And, but sometimes, like the Toyosu project, we have something that can go. In average, 4.5% growth, growth yield. And within that unit, we have some, the corner unit, expensive unit, maybe 3.7% yield, but some of the unit you can achieve 5.2%. And th those are still available now. Mm -hmm. Thanks, that's good. Um, okay, I think that's it for today. We, uh, we have just passed the hour. Thank you so much for your participation, for your attention, for all of the questions. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, uh, we are here. Uh, and now that we've moved into a prop technology, anytime uh, we can set up a virtual meeting with the respective local sales consultants, as well as our Japanese colleague um, to go into greater detail of your questions with regards to investment, with regards to rental, with regards to tax, and of course the recommendations that we have in, in the key uh, segments that we've highlighted before. So um, in the next page, uh, you will see the contact um, details of all of our uh, um, uh, local leads. 
So if you're from Singapore and Indonesia, you can always reach out to me. Uh, if you're from Malaysia, Christine Wong is our head there. And if you're in Thailand, please contact uh, my colleague, uh, Jutamas Liwanun, uh, for more information. So with that, thank you again uh, for your time and attendance. Keep well, stay safe, continue to be healthy, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.